Hello and welcome. It's Jennifer. I have been kind of on a break after doing so much in the month of November and doing my favorite Crafty Things series. I kind of am taking a little time off, but I did want to pop in to share my family Christmas card. A lot of people asked if I would share this, so I thought I would today. I used foiling and a photo for this card, and maybe this will inspire you to try something maybe next year for your holiday cards. Uh, I have some tips and tricks along the way for making the most of a foiled card. And you can use this actually on any kind of card. So let's start with the foiling. I was talking to my friend Christina Werner and she asked if I was going to do foiling on my card. And I said, yes, I plan to. I want to have a family photo in the center with a foiled frame around it. And being the sweetheart that she is, she created this beautiful frame for me. And I added my own little sentiment on it. Now, you can also find similar downloads to print yourself at um, Christi in Christina Warner's shop, which I will link to, or you can go over to Etsy and search on Christmas card or holiday card templates, and there are some amazing things that you can download for not much and then do your own foiling. So I had this file and I had it printed on neat and white 80 pound cardstock. You could use any white cardstock that you want. You just want to make sure that you print with a laser printer. So I printed these at home on my laser printer. Uh, you could instead save the file and take it to a Kinko's or Office Depot and have them print for you. Or you can even email them the file and they'll print it for you. And those stores use laser printers all the time. So anything that you get printed there, you could do for foiling. So that's a great thing. I used a very inexpensive laser printer that I have here at home to do all of these. Okay, so if you look closely, the sentiment across the bottom is in gold foil, and then the flowers around the edge are in silver foil. So I wanted to show you how to do that two-tone look. So I have printed and trimmed down all my pieces of the background here, and you can see it's black everywhere. That will soon be foil. This is an extra piece here. I'm just going to cut the sentiment out because I need to figure out how wide of a piece I need with the gold foil. So you see it's got those angled edges there just to make things a little more complicated, but I'll show you the trick I used. To cut lots of pieces of foil the same size at once, I kept it in the package so I could cut many at once. You could do them individually if you want to. This is Thermoweb, Thermoweb Deco Foil, which is my favorite foil to work with. You could also use the Heidi Swap Mink Foil. Those come in beautiful colors also. So now I have a bunch of pieces of gold cut to the right width. It really doesn't matter what the rest of the shape looks like. So I'm heating up my mink machine. You could also use a laminator, and I'll talk about that in a moment. While that heats up, I'm going to go ahead and put my gold foil in place. I'm putting some adhesive right above the sentiment. My photo will cover that up, so no worries. So that it holds that gold foil in place, so that it only covers up the words on the bottom, not the flowers around the outside. I could have saved a lot of time here by only using one color of foil, but I really had it set in my mind that I wanted to make the sentiment gold and everything else silver. So yes, wherever I put that adhesive up there, some foil will remain, but again, I'm covering that with a photo so I don't have to worry about it. So when I'm creating cards, I'm making 220 of these cards actually. Whenever I'm doing that, I do every step completely before I move on to the next one. So I printed them all, cut them all, I went and added the gold piece to them all, and then I kept moving on from there. By doing all the step at once, it really saves a lot of time since you're not having to switch between. So I'm only doing four or five cards here for the video, but I did many of these for my family's Christmas cards. Okay, so once I have all the gold in place, it's time to go ahead and add the silver on top. So I have a piece of silver deco foil. It, this is actually half of a sheet that comes in that package, so I just cut the package in half. And I'm going to place it right over this whole piece. This piece is a little bit smaller than six by six. I wanted to have a square card this year. I'm going to put this into the little sleeve that the mink machine comes with, and I'm going to feed this into the machine. And you put the foil down with the pretty side up. I am using the Mink Machine here today, but you could also use an inexpensive laminator. I like the Mink Machine because it has the different heat settings, so you can do a variety of type of products with it. And I like that it's very high quality. And I will link to a video where I talk about the Mink Machine a bit more. But remember, you can use a laminator here. The Mink Machine really has served me well. I've made thousands of cards with this, believe it or not, between my Christmas cards and some kindness cards I sent out a while back. I've used mine quite a bit, and I'm really happy with how it works.
So you just feed it through inside the sleeve that the mink comes with. And what I'll have now is anywhere there was that black laser printing, it, the foil will stick. So I can remove the silver and then remove the gold. Now you'll notice that my silver leftover piece has a lot of unused area in the middle. I'm keeping that and I'm going to use that area on another project. See all that unused area in the middle? I can still use that again on another laser printed project. So I will be showing you in a video in the future what I did with all of these. I did not want that to go to waste. Okay, so now I can go and feed another through. And I actually had a couple sleeves going so I could just feed one through after another to make this faster. And by the way, before you think I'm crazy for making so many of these Christmas cards, I do so because I like it. This is my thing. Some people bake a lot. Some people do elaborate gift wrapping. I like to make Christmas cards. It makes me happy to send these out to family and friends. I get my family involved in making them. I don't expect other people to do this. This is just something that I really like to do every year. Okay, so I go through, after all the pieces are foiled, I go through and I put double-sided tape on the back of them. So this is Be Creative tape. I always use these on my Christmas cards because I can put the adhesive down and then go on to the next step. So I can have these ready to go and adhere to the gold foil cardstock. I can also take these projects with me when I go to, um, you know, maybe a, my kid's basketball practice or whatever, and I can make these on the go. So I make the most of my time. So I have gold foil cardstock here that I'm adhering these all to. This is from My Favorite Things. I really like their gold foil cardstock. I had my son help me pre-cut these down to six by six. So it was a manageable size. And I'm gluing these down so kind of up to the corner so that there's a nice mat around the two sides there. And then I will, after I've glued all of these down, go and trim off the excess on the other two sides. Since I hand cut each of these, I didn't cut them perfectly and I wasn't really sure what size gold mat I needed. So that's why they weren't pre-cut to the right size in the beginning. That would have saved me time, but this is one of those things I was kind of just going by the seat of my pants. So I'm going ahead and just leaving a nice gold trim around the outside. Now gold foil cardstock isn't inexpensive, it's kind of pricey. So you could really save a lot of money here if you just use a regular cardstock in the background but I really had kind of set in my head that I wanted to use the gold foil. Okay, so now I have my photos printed and I'm trimming them down to four by four. So I just had four by six photos printed and I cut off some of them, so it was four by four. And I'm putting adhesive on the back of these also. So I went and I did this to all of my photos. So now I can rem remove the release paper and add the photo to the center of each of these. I try to use a family photo on my Christmas cards every year because it's just, I think, something personal that you can add to it. I know not everybody likes to do it, but I really love to see my friends and families um, updated pictures. It just makes me happy. Okay, so I've added these to the center of each of them. And this is where I thought I was going to stop. But I have issues with stopping like, <laughs> and kind of stopping when I'm ahead. I decided I wanted to add the word bless to it. So I have some more gold foil cardstock and I have this Stick It product. This is a great light, thin, double-sided adhesive. I'm going to put this double-sided adhesive sheet on the back of my gold foil cardstock so that when I die cut the word blessed, the adhesive will already be on the back of the die cut. So you'll see I'm removing the release paper one piece at a time from the Stick It product and pressing it onto the back of that gold foiled cardstock. Now you could do this also on the back of regular cardstock. It's just a great way to have the adhesive on the back of an intricate die cut. It really saves me a lot of time. Okay, so now I have the blessed word die. My friend Christina did this one for Simon's Stamp. It's one of my favorite dies of the year. And I'm just cutting smaller, more manageable pieces. Again, there is adhesive on the back of these. And I'm going to go ahead and die cut a bunch of these. So this was probably the most miserable part of this whole process. I had to die cut a lot of these. Thankfully, my husband helped out a bit. Um, I could have saved a lot of time by not doing this step, but I loved this die so much that I was just determined to use it on my card. Okay, so after die cutting this, and by the way, I used a metal shim underneath my cutting plates that really helped to make sure that this die cut completely through each time. 
So after I die cut a bunch of these, I had this pile of blessed die cuts and my daughter was so helpful and helped me push them all into like a big messed up pile. Bless her heart. But they were all tangled together. I felt like I was playing that monkey game, you know, where they all hook together. But that's okay. She wanted to help. But I had a pile ready to go and the adhesive's already on there. So that does save me a lot of time by having the adhesive there. So now I can pull the release paper off of the back of it. And that also helps to remove all those tiny little pieces that are inside those S's and the E's and the D's. Anyways, so it helps to remove those. And the great thing about the Stick It product is it's a little sticky to the touch, kind of like a post-it stick but it doesn't stick completely till you press it down. So you can kind of move it around on here and play with it a bit before you press it into place. So I make sure I got it where I want it. Then I take my bone folder and I really press it down. You could also use the side of an acrylic block to do this. Once you press it down, it'll stay put and it smooths it out and it just looks incredible. So there I added that fun, blessed sentiment onto that empty space on the bottom of the photo. And it really, I don't know, it made me happy. I wanted to add a little tiny die cut heart on there too, but it was at that point I had to tell myself to just step away and mail the card. So I skipped the little heart, but I thought it'd be cute to have a little heart under the D and blessed, but maybe next time. So anyways, I have that gold foil cardstock that matches the gold sentiment that I foiled on the bottom and the gold foil backing that I put on this. Now this is a little bit smaller than a six by six card. So I used a six by six envelope, which does require extra postage. You could save on that by making a card that's rectangle or putting it in a rectangle envelope. But I was determined to have square, so I went with that. So that's my Christmas card for this year. I hope maybe that the two-tone foiling technique is something that you could try for cards throughout the year. I appreciate you watching. If you're interested in the supplies that I use here, I link them below in my YouTube description. Or I encourage you to head over to my blog for much more information. You can do that by clicking on the top left here. There are three videos in the middle that you might like. The first is my Christmas card from last year. The middle is an info video on the Mink Machine. And the last video is another card set using foiling. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful holiday with your family.